What's going on everybody? Welcome to the second part of the Arun tutorial video where we left off. We were just talking about what the Arun indicator actually is. Now let's actually uh, program this within Python. So uh, to do this, we're going to need the same things that we've usually uh, needed, and we're going to import NumPy as NP, and then we're going to import time. If you have been following along, you can really just copy and paste the top part of uh, where we're getting the sample data, date, close, high, low, open, all that. Uh, you can just copy and paste that. Also, um, if you don't have the sample data, it is at the following link. Let me just drag it over here. Um, Syntex.com slash sample data dot text. Just do a you know control A, control C, uh, open up a text file and paste this data right into that text file. I'm calling that text file sample data dot text. So sample uh, data equals open sample data dot text with the intention to read it. We'll go ahead and read it into memory there. Then we'll do split data equals sample data dot split by new line. Then we're going to go ahead and call that numpy load text with a date, close, p, high, p, low, p, open, p, volume, equals mpy, n, well, numpy, or np, dot load text. And then here we're going to, what text are we going to load? Split data. Uh, the delimiter is going to be a comma. And unpack must equal true, so we can actually unpack it into these variables. So now what we want to do is let's go ahead and define rune. And then the only parameter for rune that we're going to give it is time frame or TF, which stands for time frame for us. Now we're going to define uh, the arrays that this is going to return. So we're going to process some stuff and we're going to, at the end of this, we're going to return some arrays. Obviously, they're going to start empty. So rune up is going to equal an empty, or empty array. Empty array. So you just say numpy instead of numpy. I always like we call it numpy at first, so I'm like always just like numpy, and then yeah array instead of array. Anyway, <laughs> uh, arun down equals empty array, and finally arun date equals empty array. X will equal time frame because X is where we want to start, right? So let's say you know you're considering a 50 day thing. You have to start X at the 50th part of that array, otherwise it's just literally impossible to consider 50 days. It's like a moving average, right? You could, again, just like moving average, consider that data and, and like if, there, if you're considering a 50 day time frame and you only have 10 days, you only consider those 10 days. And that's, you know, okay, whatever. But that's not really the best way to go about it. Plus we are, at least in our charting application, using a 200 moving average. So uh, in that case, um, it doesn't really matter. We could go all the way up to a 200 day time frame and still not really lose any data. So, and like, just like with the moving average, you know, you're using these time frames to give you, um, you know, smoothed out data. And so if you're, if you don't, if you kind of ignore that and you still use the data prior and like with less than your time frame, all the way up into that time frame, the data is all bad anyways. It's distorted compared to the rest. Anyway. Uh, so now what we want to do is we're going to say while x is less than the length of date, we could use the length of any of these variables, we just want to have that length. What do we do? Now due to the simplicity of this uh, indicator, we're actually able to do this all in one line. So I forget which other uh, thing we did all in one line. <laughs> But what I'm going to go ahead and do, I think it was like the first one we did, maybe it was average true range or something, I, can't, I honestly can't remember, but we ended up doing the, most of that fraction in one line, and this rune, we can do the entire thing in one line. So I'm just going to take it kind of slow and explain what we're doing. So first, uh, let's discuss the rune, and we'll call this rune underscore up equals what? Now let's bring back that image so we know what we're actually dealing with. So the Arun up, this is what it's calculated by. So obviously you can see it's very much in one line, right? So how can we do this within Python? Well, the time frame we've already got defined. But this, how long since the last high, you might see this and be like, well, that's going to require some functionality, right? So because not only <clears throat> do we have to 
decide how long has it been since the last high, we really need to know what was the last high. So we, we need some logic to determine what the last high was, and then some logic to determine how long since that last high. So it's not quite as simple as this thing, you know, just spits it out at you and you're like, oh, okay, that's one line. But we actually can do it in one line. If you haven't, told, or if you haven't been able to figure it out, I'm pretty proud of this one liner. So the first thing we need to do is, or let me, I guess we'll explain how we're gonna do each part. Let me bring that image back again. So how long since the last high we can get last high and last low by doing a minimum of a list. So let me bring up a command line here. Um, and so we're going to say uh, example equals, and then we're going to do one, two, uh, well, that we're going to do this, right? <laughs> uh, okay, so example is that. And what we can do is print uh, max ex, and we get a six. We can also print min ex and we get a one right the next thing that we can do is you can also get um, well first of all numpy it comes out in a numpy array you cannot perform this action on a numpy array luckily you can perform a dot to list on a numpy array to convert it to a list now the next thing that we can do is for example with this six we found six is the maximum right the next thing we could do is we could print um, ex which refers to this list dot index and then the index of what we're gonna say six so where is what index is six in here and we get four which is correct because the zeroth element is the one one two three Four. So that's how we can get the index of this array. Finally, what we just need to do is kind of flip-flop this because in the array, like we get the index, it's a four, but really, if that's where we are in the array, it should be a zero, right? It's been zero days since. So then you take the time frame, say in this case it was a, um, the time frame is five days, since we have five elements here, you would just flip that minus one because an array starts at zero. So you've got four days, four minus four, zero, time since update is zero. Um, then obviously to um, the rest, where you divide by the time frame times 100 to get that kind of percent so it's normalized, then we do that. But that's this is the logic that we're going to use. So um, what we're going to be able to do is convert that numpy array to, an, to a list, then index the maximum of that list, right? And then uh, we can do the rest. But you'll see what we're talking about um, as we go. So uh, the first thing, the rune up, would be uh, we want to know what the max high, oops, max high price of X is the time frame but we can't just use time frame because we're going to keep adding one to x but we just want to use time frame as a starting point just so a little clear so x minus uh the time frame to x so that'll give us what the highest number in the highs is right then that's great but we actually don't care about whatever that number is right we actually want to know what the index of that number is so instead, to do an index, like I said before, the index is, I'm just going to do it on another line so it's real nice and clear. We really want to do high P uh, X to, or X minus TF to X. And this is a NumPy array because we've unpacked it into NumPy, right? So we need to convert it to a list. And that is simple. You just do to list. Then, uh, what we want to know really of this max number is what is its index, right? So to do that, you do dot index that stuff. So it turns out that really dot index, um, what we need to throw in here is this. So just cut and paste that right in there. And that's how we're going to do that. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to divide this by whatever the time frame actually is. So the next thing we really want to do is throw um, some parentheses around this entire thing, and then we actually want to divide it by uh, the time frame. But as we know with Python, 
if you do a simple division such as let's uh, open up the command line again and do uh, 8 divided by 5 it's going to return a 1 because it's trying to give us a whole number but if we do 8 divided by 5.0 it gives us the true number that we're looking for also we can do 8 divided by float 5 and it gives us the right number so that's the, the idea that we're going to use here so instead of just tf we're going to say divide by float tf and then this entire operation here we actually want to multiply it by 100 so again we'll throw one last bit of uh, parentheses around here and then multiply by 100 so lastly just to make sure you did your parentheses all right you can delete that last one add it and as long as it like highlights that whole thing that you want that to be a part of the operation you did it right so we've done that one right so now let's go ahead and copy and paste that one liner right here and uh, if you have any questions about that one liner uh, feel free to post them below but um, hopefully I've explained it good enough uh, so now a rune down is going to be pretty much the same idea so I am just going to highlight this copy this paste this and change uh, this to low P we want the minimum and change this again to low P and the rest is good it looks like so now uh, we come down here and the last thing we need to do or not the last thing but um, we need to actually append them to uh, their uh, their arrays right so we want to do a rune up dot append and we want to append a, oops, a rune up to it then a rune down we want to append a, a rune uh, down and then finally a rune date we want to append date and then whatever uh, the X element of date is then finally we need to do X plus equals one to add one so this while loop doesn't result in an infinite loop now to check our logic it sometimes just helps to print everything out so let's go ahead and print out like some of our output so we can decide whether or not we're happy with our logic so print hi p x uh, print Arun, uh up and then we'll just print like a quick little splitter here uh, then print low p x print uh, and actually shoot we should do this before the x plus uh, equals one so we'll, we'll move that in just a second um, print a rune down then we'll do this print then at the end of this while loop we're gonna go ahead and return a rune date a rune up and a rune down so we can actually just assign this function to a variable or three variables so uh, let me move this x plus equals one down here so we get the right numbers here uh, yip, 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 yip. okay looks like we're good so now let's do a rune 20 and check out sales so save that run that and we have a uh, oh okay this needs to be a single quote save that run that one more time so now when we actually go to run this, uh, we can see the output that we're given. Let me just drag it over as it's spitting it out. And you can kind of check it to decide whether or not you're happy with that. Obviously, this is the high price. And this is, you know, in percentage-wise time since the last high. Um, so you can see, like, as an example, um, you know, here was the, probably a new high, not a new high, still not a new high. And you can see our number is going down, down, down. Um yeah so um, so that's that now what we're gonna actually do is go ahead and graph this on our chart in the next video so uh, stay tuned to the next video as always thanks for watching